Greetings from Arizona. This is Tony Kuiper. I've updated the TK7 panel again and would like to take a few minutes to show you the changes. The biggest change is a new module, the Go module. This is an alternative to the Rapid Mask module to make all sorts of pixel based masks, like luminosity masks. The Rapid Mask module is still included in the TK7 panel but the Go module provides an updated display with fewer buttons and more options available directly from this main interface. And it still generates 16-bit masks at near real-time speeds. There are three main sections to this module. Mask, Modify, and Output. These top-level buttons in the Mask section are the different types of masks that can be generated. You'll see that you can switch between them at any time and the panel will keep up with whatever you choose to do. With this first button, you'll get an interface to make preset masks based on lights, darks, and midtones. From here you can also generate masks based on channels, red, green, blue, and even cyan, magenta, and yellow. And you can flip between these different masks and different channels at any time. There's also a real-time full-time red overlay that colors the selected areas of the mask continuously as you try out the different masks. But these preset masks are just the start. The Go module also has zone masks. You start off by choosing a tone from the image. You'll get a new mask and a new interface. The on-screen preview is a zone mask built around the selected tone, and the interface shows you where the selected tone is on the tonal spectrum. From here you can change the brightest selected tone in the image with this tone slider, change the width of the zone with the zone width slider and change the brightness of the mask with the brightness slider. You can also cycle through the different zones in a linear fashion with the zone presets. If you need a color mask, the Go module contains the Infinity Color Masks first released in the Rapid Mask module last September. Simply choose a color from the image, I'll click on a blue from the sky, to make the initial mask and open the new interface. You can now vary the color range using the box on this slider, the brightness of the selected pixels with this slider, and the color feathering with this slider. There are also now color presets that make it easy to generate masks centered on specific hues. I'll click the orange button to quickly change to a mask based on this orange hue. If you prefer to make your own color mask using adjustment layers, this button has that covered. Clicking it creates several new adjustment layers. You then make your own mask preview using these layers the primary one being the black and white adjustment layer that lets you lighten and darken tones associated with specific colors in the image. The Go module of course has saturation and vibrance masks, again with their own button and a new interface that makes it easy to identify the type of mask being generated. And finally, there are My Channels masks, where your saved channels on the Channels panel become the starting point for making luminosity masks. I'll return to the standard Lights 1 mask to show you additional features on the Go module. Once you have your initial mask, if you need to modify it, there are options in the Modify section. You can do a Levels Adjustment or paint with black or white paint to conceal or reveal pixels in the mask. This section also has the mask calculator where you can add, subtract, and intersect different masks with ease. 
The output section of the Go module has a lot of options directly available on the main interface. I'll reset these modifications to return to the Lights 1 mask. In the output section there are several adjustment layer options. I'll click the Curves button and the Mask Preview now becomes the layer mask for a Curves Adjustment layer. You can then make an adjustment using the Properties panel and the layer mask filters this adjustment to the image. There are Burn Dodge output options that can create either transparent or 50% gray layers where the Mask Preview is automatically loaded as an active selection for you to paint through. I'll make a Lights 2 mask this time and then make a 50% gray burn layer. The module hides the marching ants, but the selection indicator shows that there is an active selection. The brush tool and paint color are automatically selected. I just need to adjust the brush and start painting. The selection determines where paint falls on the layer and what gets burned darker. The output section also has active selection and quick paint options. These are useful for mask painting. I'll again make a Lights 1 mask and this time click this black mask white brush button. The mask preview is loaded as a selection. The active layer is given a black mask and a white paintbrush is selected. Painting on the image then deposits white paint on the mask to reveal pixels on that layer as determined by the active selection. I'll make another Lights 1 mask and show how you can easily use the output section to create an actual pixel layer from a mask with this button. And one final Lights 1 mask to demonstrate the Apply option, where the Mask Preview is applied as a layer mask on the active layer. Even more output options can be found in the menu opened with this button. But this main interface already has most of the options that photographers normally use, and that is one of the goals of the Go module. The most often needed mask, modify, and output features can all be accessed right from this main interface. Okay, that's a brief introduction to the Go module. It actually has a lot more features, but this should be enough to get you started quickly making and using pixel-based masks. Now let's move over to the Combo and CX modules, as there are lots of changes here also. Remember, Combo and CX have all the same functions. They just have different layouts to accommodate different workspace arrangements. I'll close the combo module and use the CX module from here on. First off, there is a live clipping button that shows you when your highlights and shadows start to clip. It's added as a new layer at the top of the layer stack, and right now there is no clipping. I'll remove the layer mask on this curves adjustment layer and reset the adjustment. Then as I pull in on the shadows slider, the clipped shadow values turn blue. And as I pull the highlight slider left, the clipped highlights turn red. This all happens in real time as you can see, so this feature can be helpful as you are actually adjusting your images to make sure you don't clip the histogram or to recover areas that have been clipped. To turn off this feature, just click the Live Clipping button a second time. There is also a new Apply button. It opens a menu of alpha channels on the Channels panel. When you click a button, that channel mask is applied directly to the active layer as a layer mask with no intermediate 8-bit selection. This process is essentially a shortcut to using Photoshop's Apply image command. You can also control or command click on the buttons in this menu to turn them into active selections. So you can think of this apply button as a high performance channels panel built right into the CX and combo modules. Another convenient button is the image mask toggle button. 
It allows you to quickly toggle back and forth between viewing the layer mask and viewing the image without having to find the right shortcut keys. In the TK Actions menu, there are two new actions. Soft Pop is a one-click method to add some saturation, contrast, and sharpness to the image. It works via a smart object, so it takes a few seconds to complete. Paint Contrast creates a layer that allows you to paint in additional contrast while you're burning and dodging. If I paint with a light color, I can dodge and add contrast to the image's lighter values. With a dark color, I can burn and add contrast to the shadows. And you can also use different colors to add contrast and color while burning and dodging. There are also several big changes now on how to access your personal actions via this module. First off, there is an instant action on the front of the module. It's matched with the instant action action in the TK user actions action set. If you have a favorite action, record it into the instant action action in order to have quick access to it directly from the module. I've recorded my print adjustment action as the instant action, so when I click the instant action button, that action runs and quickly prepares my image for printing. It's also now much easier to program your own actions into the module's user actions menu. You just need to record or drag actions into the TK user actions action set. For this demo, I'll drag the color sketch and black frame actions there. Then, the next time you open the menu, there they are. I can now click the color sketch menu item and it plays that action. It's also now possible to reprogram several buttons to run your actions directly from 23 different buttons on the module. First, record or drag actions into the TK Button Actions action set. This time, I'll drag in the remaining sketch and white frame actions. You'll want to give these actions short names so that the name fits on the module's buttons, usually 5 to 9 characters. I'll shorten this name to WH frame. Then, control or command click on one of the available buttons on the module. This opens a menu of the actions in the TK button actions action set. Click on an action from the menu, and the button now shows that action as its name. And when I click that button, it plays that action and in this case creates a white frame for my image. So if you have buttons on this module that you're not using, think about reprogramming them with actions that you do use so you can access them directly from this module's main interface. Finally, there are some color tagging possibilities. Right click on any button to give it a solid color. Right click again to turn off the solid color and return to the colored edge shadow. This type of color tagging can be used to make buttons that you use frequently more prominent. The different menus support color tagging also. Right click on a menu item and choose a color from the new menu. That color now becomes the highlight color for that action. This can help you better organize the actions to suit your needs and to find your favorites in the menu quickly. The User Actions menu also has this feature. Okay, that's a really quick rundown of the major new features in this TK7 update. I'm really excited about all of them and hope you are too. Please give them a try. I think many of them will find a place in your workflow. This is Tony Kuiper.
Best wishes for good light.